This week I am joined by Brian from Games Game Masters. Sorry, I said it wrong. Uh, how are you doing, Brian? Doing peachy. That's good. Um, so your channel is described in the description as assorted geekery. Yes. Would that, would that be fair? Um, and so I looked back on some of your older videos and you were doing like coffee videos, ASMR, Elden Ring, which I think if you look back on mine, it's like Minecraft and Watch Dogs. So yeah, what, 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 what were you doing back then? So when it first started, I always was into D&D, you know, and I knew that, that Game Masters was always going to have an element of Dungeons and Dragons to it. But initially when I first started, I was just pretty much picking up stuff and throwing it at the wall, see what would stick. So the, the ASMR stuff, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of neat. You know, there was a few few videos out there that I ran across that, you know, would have somebody crinkling paper and it just, you know, with headphones on would just sound really, really cool. And so, you know, I did a couple that I think I did one with Legos, you know, would just dump them all out on the table and you just hear it. I thought that was neat. Um, I, too, did a couple of Minecraft videos, uh, tried to get into being game masters. You know, it, it's yeah. it's not being the master of the game. It's being it's, it's trying to cater to all the different types of games out there. Um, and part of what I wanted to do was to bring in video games uh, as well as tabletop role-playing games. So, yeah, when you see some of the older stuff in there, you might see some Elden Ring, um, some other video games that I've done. Uh, they, they just didn't have a whole lot of traction. But when I started really solely focusing on D&D and tabletop role-playing games, that's kind of where uh, the channel started to, to find its niche and um, progressing forward. Yeah. And you, you did a lot of videos in the back of, uh, the front of your car, didn't you? I, mean, I still I, do. I always think, oh, it's the guy who does his car videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, okay, so that started out um, doing it in a vehicle because it was it was soundproof for the most part and i could control the environment i could uh block out a, a, a na you know if i if i had a neighbor that was cutting the grass i could hop in the car drive to a parking lot and record yeah. um like here where i'm at i mean i'm out in the middle of nowhere literally but i do have neighbors that are fairly close and when he starts up his lawnmower it's one of those big industrial sit on it and drive around like a four wheeler type lawnmower and your, your teeth rattle cause it's so loud. So I can't do any recording when he's, when he's doing that. And I can't just, you know, go out there and say, Hey, stop. I got to record a video. Oh, yeah, oh, I am. <laughs> so yeah. So the, the car, uh, that that's really how it started. Um, and I think one of my very first, uh, review videos, I was actually going to my, child's uh, school and had just stopped by the post office, uh, my PO box and picked up a, a book from that wizards had sent me and just cracked it open right there while I was waiting for her to get out of school, started recording. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, you seem to have wizards send you stuff early. Is that fair? Yes. I yes. mean, how do you angle that? Did you push <laughs> them or did they just notice you? So Game Masters was a retail store back in the, uh, the, the early 90s and brick and mortar store. And we had a very strong relationship with Wizards of the Coast. And in around 2001, 2002, uh, the st we closed the store. And, but I always maintained the website, GameMasters.com, and also maintained the, uh, the website or the uh, YouTube channel didn't really do a whole lot with the YouTube YouTube channel, but always maintained my relationship with Wizards of the Coast. And through the website, I would do reviews, book reviews. And, you know, this was, of course, before YouTube was ever, you know, was really a big thing. Nobody was really getting on it for that reason. It was just to post goofy videos. And as it evolved, we evolved. And I, you know, eventually started the YouTube channel and uh had, like i said maintained my relationship with wizards of the coast mm -hmm. and they just have always sent me review promotional books that's fantastic so your studio i'm going to call it i've been for weeks looking at your orangey backdrop going is that green screen or is that and i finally found a video where it's in the, the corner of your room it's kind of <laughs> a backdrop what you just angle into a corner is that right 
Yeah. I'll turn this light on. Oh, you must be sat in front of it. (laughs) There we go. go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just a spare bedroom. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a middle bedroom that I have and, uh, it's a backdrop that I've got off of, um, uh, Amazon. And it's not a green screen, you know, it's just a, a backdrop. Uh, cathedral, it's a famous cathedral. Right now, the name of it escapes me. But I've got another one that's a bit uh, like a looks like it's a big, long uh, library. Mm. Um, I do have a green screen, but I hardly ever use it. Yeah. And uh, but the way I've got this studio set up, I've got different angles that I can set my camera up at. It's yeah. just that one is the most common. It works really I well, I think, because I yeah. didn't know what was going on. I was like, it doesn't look as bad as a green screen can, so, yeah. Um, right, on to D&D, I guess. And um, we'll start with, do you have any, like, homebrew rules at your table that you can think of top of your head? Uh, we've got probably a good thousand homebrew rules. Um, and it's it's the number one homebrew rule that we use is... I don't care what rule I've made in the past. If I make a decision right here, right now, and it contradicts anything I've made in the past, the new rule that I just did is the new rule. Um, That said, I mean, I'm not a tyrant when we play. It's, It's all about having fun. I believe in... I believe in very fun circumstances. I believe in epic encounters and I just want my players to have a, a, a good memory. Uh, most of my players are, are younger than me and I have a lot of fond memories of playing the game when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. Um, I'm going on 51 now, so that was a good 30 something years ago for me, but I still have some really rich memories from that time. And that's what I want to create for these guys. You know, is it stupid to have a, I don't know, a, a great sword burst into flame when it otherwise doesn't have that property? Okay. Yeah. According to the rules, that's likely not to happen. But when you have a, a table that you can roll a D hundred on, and that's one of the results well, it's going to happen, and it's kind of cool when they take it and use that as a light to light their way through a through a dungeon, or use that to attack a uh, a kobold or orc or whatever. It's just, uh, yeah. So I mean, homebrew rules we've got a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And um, so, what about villains then? How do how do you craft a memorable villain for your players? The easiest way that I've always done this has been to look at modern cinema, look at old cinema, and try to find somebody that you just, you loathe, but has a very human quality about them. Um, I think one of the best villains that I have modeled after in recent years, take a look at some of the Harry Potter movies, and you have Snape. Mm. He... For, for the most part, up until, spoilers to everybody, he wasn't actually a villain, um, but up until that last little bit, uh, or the last, what, second to last movie, um, he was kind of portrayed as this nasty, mean teacher, but he had a, re- I wouldn't even call it a redemption arc, but he had a moment of redemption through Harry's, you know, through Harry's eyes, yeah. and everything became clear, and to me, that is what makes just wow such a uh, an, an interesting villain or take uh, Darth Vader for example you know it's it's this guy that that and, and I'm, I'm going to refer to the the basic Star Wars you know episodes four five and six you've got this guy that that comes on screen larger than life is just as as evil as could be but towards the end he has this redemption arc now not all of my villains have redemption arcs but uh there are a lot of them that are modeled after, you know, cinema, um, after the villains that you see in cinema or books. You know, I get a lot of inspiration from reading books as well. Uh, a lot of the old D and D books from, uh, let's see the, the water deep uh, or the, the avatar trilogy, um, Tantris, uh, shadow, something that I can't remember the name of. It's been years since I've read those. Um, but where some of the, the good guys, you know, dipped into the dark side, if you will, and uh, even became gods. 
and mm. you know it's just a uh, it's just such D D. that's what i like so much about it is it has such a rich uh possibility of imagination do you think that the players always have to vanquish the villain at the end no nah. talk then i'm just thinking i've never had one escape to come back in another campaign which is a cool idea no, it's in fact, my villains get away quite a bit um, mm -hmm. for that very reason, uh, because we do have them make a return. Gosh, I think I've even had one that I created. Uh, his name is Grain, uh, Evil Sorcerer, and uh, he popped up. Gosh, it would have been back in the Game Master's days when we had the brick and mortar store. So that would have been in the late, late, late 90s. And still to this day, he, he roams around my campaign world. Um, given I don't have the same players that I had, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, but it's, it's a villain that, I mean, he'll, he'll get killed every now and again, but because of what he is, who he is, he has a way of coming back every time, yeah. you know, kind of like a Michael Myers, <laughs> yeah, Jason yeah. Voorhees. They're fun though. Yeah. Fun. Um, so what edition are you playing? Or what's your favorite? <laughs> It's I, my personal favorite is second edition, um, mm. but it is also a kind of a bastardization of second edition because we've dropped Thacko, but we also use a lot of D20 rolls from third edition, but the meat and flesh of it is fifth edition. So it uses several different editions of D&D, but also too, we use mechanics from other systems. Um, for example, let's see the newest the newest mechanic that I just put in there that everybody just absolutely loves. Um, there is a game out there called Dragonbane, and Dragonbane uses instead of dice rolling for initiative, you, you have cards, and you you shuffle the cards. You, everybody picks a card at random, and whatever the number is that's on that card, that's the initiative that you go on. And it's not that much different than rolling dice, but everybody has the card that's in front of them. And when their turn is over, they flip the card over and they can no longer do an action, you know, for that combat round. And then the round starts over when it's, you know, once everybody's had a, a go, we collect the card, shuffle them, draw them out again. And, you know, the next combat round goes. Um, so that's an example of another game that, that we use the mechanics of in our D&D world that, uh, well, the players like it. Mm. Every table's different out there, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, have you got a story of a challenging DM session where you were up against it, where you struggled? I've got many. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the, the most challenging has been when it's it's been just a hard week at work and I haven't had an opportunity to prepare anything at all. And, you know, I but I know I've got, you know, a group of five, six people showing up and they're expecting to play. Um, and, and I've even addressed this on my channel before that, you know, it's thankfully I have a very forgiving group of people that they know that, you know, I can, I can tell them, Hey, still come on over. We'll, we'll do something. We'll order pizza. We'll watch a movie or we'll play a board game. You know, we'll do something else or somebody else can run a one shot for this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're very forgiving in that way. But that's probably the most challenging element uh, for me to DM is when it's just been a very dramatic week at work and I haven't had an opportunity to prepare anything. Yeah. So no, no like player derailment. You've never had anyone where a player does oh. something and you're like, oh no. We're oh yeah, yeah, for sure that happens. Um, I, a specific instance, uh, I, so I have, cre <laughs> I, I, and I have mentioned this before in, in a couple of videos, um, Fandelver and below hmm. when I ran it, when it originally came out years ago, uh, I was running it and one of the players that or actually two of the players in that game, they were some very old school players had played, you know, second edition. Um, everybody else had was very new to fifth edition, but they knew the forgotten realms map very very well and instead of going into the town of uh, Fandolin they wanted to go over to the continent of Karatur well I mean that's you know a good what 10 12,000 miles away from where we're currently playing and they insisted that that's where they went and that that was kind of a challenge to uh, rein them back in and say no <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I hate to take away the player agency like this, but 
this this is a you know this is a a confined game that's going to be taking place in this specific area uh we're we're not we're not doing a side trek all the way over there first before we come back here to do this mm. no i've got a question for you one of my players is currently sort of passing on money he's got to his next character who doesn't exist yet he said so sort i of said i'll leave this here or I'll, he's my cousin, so I'll, I'm sending all these treasures to him so that when I start him at level one, he's got this. What do you think of that? Is that allowed? Should I go with that? That's a tricky one. Um, I, is it, is, so is it, okay, let me ask you this. Is it a, is it going to be an ongoing campaign or is this going to be a just completely new? No, I'm, I'm finishing Wild Beyond the Witchlight and then it's Vecna next. And I'm like, I don't want him having. He was got, he's got the deck of many things now. And he's like, I'll just send it. He's joking, but saying, I'll send it to my cousin. I'm sure. like, no, no, no. no. But I don't like to say no. But at what, what point do I say, yeah, you can send him your weapons and it's a keepsake. Of right. His. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not too keen on saying the word no either to players. I, I really like them to have that total agency. Mm. But in an instance like that, yeah, sure. Okay, send it to your cousin. Um, then when they start playing, I think this is exactly how I would run it. Uh your your cousin evidently wasn't that trustworthy and i don't know maybe you could put together a, a party to go look for him but he's not home and it looks like it's been vacant for quite a while and there's no sign of where he went or nobody in the area seems to know what's happened to him <laughs> yeah yeah that's it he has had some he's asked some good questions before like we were fighting on a staircase and he said can I cast Mage Hand to... Well, I thought, I said, no, well, I know he can't attack. It can't attack. But he said, can it push a guy down the stairs? And I thought, yeah, that is fair. And I did say yeah. no at the time, but I thought, regardless of whether it can or it can't, I should have allowed that. And it does specifically say it can't attack, doesn't it? Right. But he was like, can it push something? Well, yeah, good. It can. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um and and that's where okay so we'll go back to what i had said you know a moment ago too uh whatever ruling was that i've made in the past the current rule that i'm making now that's the new you know that that's what it is yeah. um i i don't like i'm not a fan at all of pausing the game to flip through the book to find a specific instance um or example I've got a couple of folks that will want to do, you know, will be in the middle of combat or, you know, an exact uh, scenario of what you're talking about. You know, they'll want to cast a uh, mage hand to try to push the guy down the stairs. And if I say no, I've got one player that will insist we pause the game mm -hmm. and he will go online and just start going through every Reddit that mm -hmm. he can find to find some justification to say, yes, it can happen. And my counter to that is always, then you need to go play at that table. That's at fair. my table, I'm running this game to to get from point A to point B, and we've got a lot to go through. And nobody else sitting here, the other four people, the other five people sitting here, they don't want to wait for 30 minutes for you to look through this and for us to make a ruling. So I'm going to make that ruling on the fly. Yeah. R right or wrong, you know, I'm just going to make that ruling on the fly, and we're going to go with it. Um, and there have been plenty of times where I've said, you know what, you know, that, that mage hand that you cast, yeah, sure, it can pick up a sword and it can just, you know, uh, stab the guy right there in the chest. Hmm. I mean, you know, again, right or wrong, um, my objective is to keep the story moving forward, not have a 30, 45 minute break. Now, if, if we've all, you know, we're playing and then we've been playing for two, three hours and we're hungry, we're starving, we got to eat. Okay, sure. We may pause the game while we go grab a pizza or something mm -hmm. and, you know, then come back. But uh, otherwise, when we're, in, when we're in the thick of, of playing, no, I, I just, I like to keep things moving. Yeah, yeah. Well, how are you feeling about the current phase of uh, where we're at with D and D right now? Is you know the big change is coming, and I know you struggled with uh, getting your Vecna book. I was messaging you at the time, and uh, the book of Deck of Many Things book, the deck itself, people had problems. Mm -hmm. I didn't have problems with either, but that doesn't mean that no one else 
Just right. Struggling. I couldn't believe it when I got mine fine and you were straight away like, I ain't got it. And I was thinking, oh, my God, he's a YouTuber. He needs his book first. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? I yeah. thought he'll be fuming. No, well, see, that's the thing is I, I can't, uh, I, I still recognize that this is all just a, it's a game. Yeah. And I refuse to let myself get so wrapped up in anger over it. Um, I'm, I'm more of a, what, what will set me off is in the instance of uh, like, I, I, the Vecna book, for example, you know, I did the pre-order of it exactly as they had advertised. And I gave them my money in good faith that I would receive the book again as advertised early and I never got it. So that's, that's what will set me off and that's what will get me to be vocal. Um, but with, for example, this new book, uh, the, the quest from the infant staircase, I didn't pre-order it. Um, I have a couple of really good friends that, uh, uh, overseas that, that did pre-order it and they, you know, they were able to get, um, uh, early access to it and shared it with me via D and D beyond. Mm. So I still had access to be able to get material from it to do, you know, to, to turn out a couple of videos for it. Yeah. Um, but I, I recognize that what Watsi is doing is a business. I don't necessarily agree with their business decisions and how they decided to make that alteration of pre-order, get early access to now all of a sudden you no longer get that uh, early access, even though you did pre-order it. I feel that that is not exactly... Um, What's it's a good, good word business. for it? It's good well, it's not good. Yeah, exactly. It's not good business. Um, I did get an email from them that they are wanting to send me the the new uh, Player's Handbook, the 2024 Player's Handbook, um, Dungeon Master's Guide and Monster Manual as those come out. And the email that I got stated that I can't show anything about the interior of it until after August 1st. Uh, here we are still... It's what July fourteenth for me. Um, I still don't have it, so I'm not going to hold my breath. But I think that you know it's a new edition coming out. I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to look through it. And as I've mentioned many times on my channel, uh, if if I like an element of the book um, or the content, I'll say. If I don't. I'll be as equally vocal about it. Mm -hmm. They don't send me material for me to be a shill. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they send the material to me and they know full well that, uh, like I said, if I don't like it, I'm going to be vocal about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, I think that that, honestly, I think that's a key to a good, healthy relationship. Um, not that I think Wizards of the Coast sees me as being in a relationship with them, mm -hmm. but it is a relationship of sorts. Yeah, of course it is. So, yeah, the, the, if they're going um, full-on bonus actions with most of the player you know, characters, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they balance it out with doing the same for monsters where they get more things to do and are meaner and tougher. They, they say the challenge ratings will be more appropriately set. Right. I find that exciting. I find that exciting. Um, if it's, yeah, and I'll tell you this right now, if it's not set up that way, that'll be one of the first things that we homebrew just to balance it out, mm. you know? And that's the thing I like so much about D&D &D is if it doesn't work the way you think it should work, change it, you know, make it work the yeah. way you want it to work. Make it work the way it works best at you for you and your table. Yeah. There's so many systems now. I've got all the tales of the Valiant stuff and as you know, the DC20 mm -hmm. stuff. It's just, I'm a bit overwhelmed with it, really. Yeah, you know? there's a lot out there. And I think that a lot will have their own audience, but ultimately with too many out, D&D &D will just raise their head because they've got all that weight behind them all those years. Right. I think they'll just push through because people, all new players from today who have never heard of D&D, &D, they're not going to stumble upon D &D, DC 20 first. They'll still find D&D &D content, won't they, first? Yeah. So, Do you think that that's going to water the the landscape down? Well, it does. It's like voting, isn't it? You know that if everyone votes different things, people everybody gets less votes. Right. right. So, yeah, absolutely, people will go go off, but the OGL will be forgotten. It'll be only us Eventually. who lived it to 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 witter about it. Yeah. It's like the, the people who you know, fourth edition were rubbish. It's not relevant anymore. Shut up. 
it's not. You know what I mean? You've got your opinion, but yeah, yeah it gets it, it just time heals, doesn't it? And uh, that's why I'm surprised that wizards aren't doing a better job of having a nice, clean reputation. They seem to be making stumble after stumble. I think that part of it is, uh, right now anyway, specifically, is a lack of clear leadership. You know, they still don't have a president. Um, it's, it's, I, I think that they have to have a good, solid direction to go. And while I think they know a direction that they're going, I don't think that they're being given like a clear roadmap of how to get from point A to point B. Um, there are tiny little things that I think they could do that would improve in, in majestic ways. Um, you know, I, I bring up, uh, uh, to give a great example, look at uh, quest of the infinite staircase and the Vecna Eve of ruin. Hmm. So I, I, I've, I've had, I was convinced that there was going to be a connection between the two books that, in, in Quest of the Infinite Staircase, there's a genie that, that grants wishes. He, he fulfills wishes, but he doesn't do it by, I wish for a, I wish for a sword of a giant slaying. That, he doesn't just manifest the sword into your hand. Instead, what he does is he sends a party to that realm that has the ability to slay that giant. And it could be that the individual, the, the, the uh, main person that actually slays the giant is named Sword. Mm. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, so there's your sword. There's your sword of giant slaying. Um, in Vecna Eve of Ruin, it was a wish that went wrong, yeah. seemingly, that got the players into Sigil. Sigil however you want to pronounce it. And uh, I just thought that that would have been a no-brainer connection to have Nafis be the one that sent the players to Sigil to fulfill that wish. Mm. And there's no connection there. You know, I, I come from a marketing background. So my everything I look at, I look at how things can be connected, how you can cross-promote. And to me, having two $50, $60 books, if you can connect them, then that increases your odds by 27, 33% of selling that second book instead of, you know, I'm only going to buy this one. I'm not going to worry about this one because there's no connection to it. You make that connection, your odds go up that you're going to sell that second book. And it's, it's little things like that, that I see that wizards of the coast could vastly improve upon. Um, I, I can only hope that they do that moving forward with this new edition of uh, fifth edition. Well, they promised, well, I say promised, but in the advertising video up ahead, it was like the obelisks, you know, find out all about right. how that, and you, what? No, right. that's not in the book. Right. There's no mention about the obelisks whatsoever. And yeah, um, the, yeah, the trailer, you know, D&D yeah. &D Direct or whatever. Oh, yeah, wait, look out for this. Yeah. Bad. The only thing I can hope for is... And I haven't mentioned this yet, so this this will be one of the first times I've actually talked about this uh, this idea. The only thing I can hope, um, again, kind of spoiler, guys, for uh, for Vecna Eve of Ruin, but at the end of it, uh, should you be successful, um, Vecna is uh, cast down uh, as uh, it's unclear if he's back to being ungod or in god. I don't know yet, but he gets cast down to Greyhawk. And we do know that Greyhawk is the main campaign setting that will be featured predominantly in the new player's handbook, DMG and monster manual. Mm. And all I can hope is that they are going to play the long game and put the obelisks in the new 2024 fifth edition and finally give us a little bit of closure as to what those are and how those work. Um, Maybe. That's, I mean, speculation, but... Yeah. Because Greyhawk, yeah, being in the DMG as a setting, I think that sounds cool. I'll, I'm all for it. But then my second voice is like, are we really going to just... We're doing a hard reset so that we can 
reprint like Infinite Staircase, all old modules for a time and tread water for a year right. before letting, letting some new writers that they've just hired right. you know, get some new products together. I'm not complaining. Whatever they put out, I do like. It's not, I'm a real, it's not because I'm a sycophant to them, but I just really like it and I'm quite positive I enjoy playing it. All right? yeah. not really, but the, like you say, the marketing business side is quite exhausting and that's where my cynicism comes in. But, you know, I'm still going to play it. I've not sure. gone away or anything. Uh, right, I'm going to detour now into your channel itself. Who does your thumbnails and editing? Is it you? Me. Well, I love the thumbnail style. You know, it's obviously when you're a YouTuber, you look at the you analyze yeah. these things. But yeah, just going back and back, the whole yellow text and the bright mm -hmm. design. I just applaud, applaud that. Um, and uh, it's it's a hard game. How do you how do you balance? You know, working life, family life, whatever. Oh boy, it's it's not easy um i will tell you this anybody that makes a decision to try to become a youtuber at a certain point you will eat sleep dream breathe and shower youtube it it will become the only thing left in your life um I, we went out to dinner last night. I've got I've got a wife, two kids, and we went out to dinner last night. And I'm sitting here thinking, instead of reading the menu, I'm thinking to myself, okay, so how can I make what what what's going to be my next video idea? You know, and it sucks. It really yeah. sucks. Yeah. But it's also it's also very therapeutic for me um, when when I'm sitting down playing with. Uh, playing D D or a role playing game with uh with friends it's i that's actually as weird as it sounds that's probably one of the only times that i'm not thinking about youtube ideas you know or or what can i make as a youtube idea um my players as best i know are not uh, uh they don't ever talk about the videos that i make um which is, I guess, a good thing because I do give quite a few spoilers out on stuff that I'm working on in those, uh, idea wise anyway, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's to, to balance everything is, I don't know. It's, it's sometimes it's not easy, but you started it because it was a passion though. Yes. And it still is. It still is. Yeah. I mean, it, it is something that I get a lot of enjoyment out of. Um, it's a lot of personal fulfillment for me because I've, I've got a face for radio <laughs> and uh, evidently a face for YouTube. Um, but I've always wanted to be in the movies, mm. you know, and Hollywood and, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And that is not going to happen. But doing stuff like this where I can make a movie or, you know, a video for myself and post yeah. it out there, um, you know, that's something I can do and I don't have to rely on anybody else. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't hire anybody to do my thumbnails. I don't hire anybody to do my editing. I do all of that myself. Um, you know, I think it'd be great if I could get the numbers. Uh, you know, I said earlier, I said I wasn't so much concerned about uh, views, hmm. but I think it would be cool if I could get myself to a point where each video was getting, you know, 20,000 views, 50,000 views. At that point, you know, hey, maybe I could hire somebody. Yeah. But right now, it's just we're I'm too small. It's mm. to to even think about that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been really lucky recently. I've come from sitting on the couch watching you guys to shouldering in between you and getting to talk to you know many D and D YouTubers, and uh, it's just a time game a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. It's that time span. If you just stick at it, you just do what you enjoy, yeah. and, and you grow, don't you? I mean. As far as I'm concerned, you know you're you're one of the main ones that I watch, and oh, you seem you. to be completely well well placed. Do you know what I mean? You're unique. It's not you're not just someone in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Do something right. go at it. You, you have your style. It works, and <laughs> and you you're not actually stuck in that rut of it's only D and D. You 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 can jump out of your niche doing the dragon bane, uh, you know, and it's not out of place. So I think you've got quite a freedom. Yeah, I think there is a degree of freedom there. Um, it, it still is connected to 
uh, tabletop role playing. And I mean, and that, that kind of goes in with the fold of what the name of the channel is game masters, you know, and it's, it's thankfully it's a, a name that, that can cover multiple games. Um, of course, you know, then you're competing with the, the, the uh, YouTube algorithm at that point. And I mean, I will say this, I mean, I'm looking at my numbers right now. Um, my dragon Bane videos, those were among my lowest viewed videos out there that I've ever made, but they are also among my most favorite that I've made. Uh, I, if, if you watch them, I, I went into a completely different style and making and how I put them together, how I made them. And I, I really liked the thumbnails that I made for them. They're, they're uniform. They yes. look all identical, but they look wildly different at the same time. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's my first attempt at what is known as, as evergreen content where the content really is once it's out there, it's, there's no need to update it, you know? Um, whereas a lot of what I do is all based on, uh, the right moment at the right time. You know, um, I think for example, quest of the infinite staircase right now, you know, it's the newest book that's coming out and I'm trying to strike while that iron is hot and that, that, gets a lot of views because everybody's searching for that right now, right this moment. Mm -hmm. Dragon Bane has been out for about a year and a half or so. So not many people are looking for it, but should somebody discover that game in five years, 10 years, th there it is, you know? And, and so there's a whole playlist of neat stuff that they can look at for the basics of it. Um, so that's one of the reasons I really liked that particular series of, of videos. Yeah, some some video series that you make um, just keeps on bringing you views and money mm. ticks away in the background. Like you say, some flash really well, like Vecna. You maybe you hit the wave well, and then and then it diminishes. Uh, as I say, we've, we're still in that after OGL part where the numbers aren't getting where they used to be. No. But you know, people like you and I can just enjoy talking about what we love and uh, and be some of the the voices that get traction. Yeah. You know, so what role do you think the digital area is going to take in the future? We're heading towards that VCT, and I just think D and D used to be played in person if you can. You know, that's that's my preferred method of playing. Um, I, I am not a fan of online play at all. Uh, I've tried it a few times, but what what I find I find it very distracting. Um, you know, player one will have a dog barking in the background constantly. Uh, player two will be having a conversation with somebody over there. Yeah, let's go get some pizza after this. And oh, hey, did you put gas in the car? Uh, oh, you're going to the grocery store. Hey, can you can you add this this? You know, I can't stand that. Yeah. You know, I I need you to talk to me, not not you know whoever is over there, not your roommate, your mom, whoever. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and then you'll have somebody that just has to go to the bathroom and they disappear for 20 minutes while you're in the middle of fighting a big dragon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's just, it's, it, it's not my preferred style of play. I, I much rather like sitting in at a table with, with people and having that camaraderie. Um, but that said, uh, I do think that, VTT is, I, I understand and I know that it is a big appeal for a lot of players, especially newer players. Um, COVID really reinforced the legitimacy of playing online. And I think that, I think that that's where we're going to see a good core of the 2024 player's handbook, uh, DMG, DMG and monster manual. I think that it's going to be a very heavy, uh, lean on VTT. I, I think that they are going to have some very specific sections in those that will lead people. It will take their hand and lead them towards the VTT. Um, from a business standpoint, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I gotta be honest, if it was me, I'd probably do the exact same thing because 
when you have VTT, a, a virtual tabletop, you don't have the physical books that you have to print. You don't have the shipping logistics that goes along with that. You don't have to worry about uh, individuals in the United States getting the books before individuals in the UK versus the folks that are over in uh, Australia or anywhere. You know, it's there's no shipping logistics. It's on this day at this time, we click a button and it's released and everybody has access to it. Mm. And I think that that is going to appeal to a lot of players. Um, I'm still old school. I don't like tablets that I have to sit and read. I prefer a book. Me too. I like, I'll, I'll have loads of books behind the DM screen and mm -hmm. I'm just happy there. Um, and I have bought with Vecna, I paid an arm and a leg to get that thing a month early yeah. and you know, nearly a hundred pounds. It was worth it, you know, for the views, I think for so. the enjoyment. I, I, it was a it was a business decision on my part. Yeah, but um, thirty pounds for a PDF. That's a, a lot. What a sting, you know. Yeah. If it, the, the, the stupidity is that if it was ten pound each, I'd probably buy three or four and right. spend the same money. But that, I feel like I'm getting good value. But yeah, it's a tough prospect. Quests coming out and thinking, do I buy the double? I didn't. The well, books already come to work, I think. So. The other thing that I don't like about the VTT is I'll, I'll use Vecna as, as a prime example. So you, you saw the advertising too, where, you know, how you pre-order, you get early access. Yeah. And then they did a marketplace update that in effect completely removed that access for anybody in the United States. That's, that's where I'm at is in the United States. And that's fine. I have no issues had they advertised that that's what was going to happen. Mm. But what this tells me is, let's say you decide, you know what, I'm going to go all in and I'm only going to buy digital content from this point forward. Mm. And then a year from now, two years from now, they change their policies and their practices without ever telling you. And you now no longer have access to half of the books that you owned or any of the books that you, you had previously purchased. Yeah. You have no way of storing them locally for you to have access to. Um, let's say that they decide, I don't know, let's say they decide, okay, so the term Vecna now means something so heinously evil that we have to scrub that name from everything. Well, it's just easier if we just completely remove all Vecna books from existence. Yeah. And you now no longer have access to any of that stuff unless you bought it and you had it physically. Mm -hmm. um, that might be a slightly extreme, you know, take on it. But mm -hmm. the point there is they can change that at any point and remove your access to anything digitally. Um, moreover, let's say that they do some uh, look at Spelljammer, for example, you know, with with the Hato Z. And the, the oh, physical yeah. version that I have is the original version of it. Like um, it. They have gone through the digital version and updated it and changed it. You'll no longer see the access. You're no longer have access or see what it originally stated because they changed that. So do I suspect that, that they would ever change anything? Um, I mean, that was a big change and a, and a legitimate change. You know, I'm not saying that, but let's say, you know, all of a sudden uh, jump rules. I don't know. I'll just pick that one out for as an example. Let's say in the new 2024 um, Player's Handbook or DMG, they've got listed how jump works. It's currently what uh, your your strength modifier or three, three times your strength modifier uh, if you're doing a, a standing jump. Mm. So let's say they decide to change how jump works but they never tell you about it. Mm. You know, now all of a sudden you're playing your game, you're playing your game. And in a VTT, you know, those rules are going to be plugged into it. You as the dungeon master go to, you know, make a ruling on how jump works, but it doesn't work the way you thought it did mm. because they changed that and never told you. So that's another risk that you've got to keep in mind could happen with, uh, you know, digital content. I, I'm just, I'm not a fan of it. Well, they've done something similar where before you could buy specific magic items, mm -hmm. and now you've got to buy the entire module. Right. That's dis is it disgraceful? 
or is it just business? Um, uh, yeah, depends on how you look at it. We don't like change. Yeah. <laughs> so it's <terrible>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with, as, with, to finish off this digital conversation, I am looking forward to a time when we've got D&D in VR. That would be... Stellar. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'd be, that'd be cool. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to play uh, Minecraft in VR, mm. and that was pretty amazing. Um, I've always wanted to try playing uh, Elden Ring in VR. I think that'd just make me sick because it's yeah. such a fast moving game. Yeah. But playing D and D, I I think that if you had the right environment, uh, I I think that would be really cool. Well, can you imagine Baldur's Gate sort of speak uh, where it's one turn at a time in VR? It wouldn't be yeah. wouldn't be too bad, would it? Because it's just like your turn. Yeah. Yeah. You know that'd be amazing. It would be. Uh, and AI, AI D and D, is that is that dirty for us? I don't know. I mean, I'm 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 probably not as opposed to AI elements as other folks are. Mm. I can see where, like in in the term in in generative AI uh, AI artwork, as as some people would get very offended by that term. Um, I'm not as upsetting. Or it doesn't upset me as much as other as it does others. Mm. Uh, I use I personally use ChatGPT. I also have Midjourney, although I will say that I'm using it less and less, uh, just because I'm I'm not I'm not I don't know I'm I'm, I'm kind of losing my fascination with Midjourney. Um, ChatGPT, however, I still use um, it. It I use it more to give me a nudge, you know, in in, in a direction that that. Again, I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, you know, when I've had a very dramatic long week at work, I've got a rough outline. I can take that outline, pop it in there and say, OK, give me two more points to this encounter. And it does a pretty good job of of giving me ideas of what I can do to either draw that encounter out or add a twist to it that I just wasn't really thinking about. So I guess in that respect, I, I'm not as, as, uh, uh, concerned about AI stuff. I, I'm not as offended by AI stuff as others might be. Mm. Yeah. I, mean, I know I've used it for like, um, travel and forests. I've said to chat mm. and said, well, can you, uh, give me 20 descriptions of yeah. the forest scenes? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it does, does a great job. Whereas I would not have done a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Last question is, if I ask you to design a monster, like in five minutes, do you have like a standard, oh, I love this type of monster because, you know, it's kind of a favorite monster question. I, I do. Um, mine are mostly, uh, I guess that would be considered aberrations. Uh, Cthulhu. Uh, I, I am a, a very avid horror fan and I really like the whole, so Call of Cthulhu is a game that we played uh, from Chaosium, the Chaosium version of it, that I played a lot of in my younger days. And that is something that I've always liked the psychological uh, impact that that game had. And so monsters that when I'm homebrewing monsters, most of the time they're, they're kind of themed around, you know, Cthulhu, uh, other Cthulhu type monsters. Um, that's, that would definitely be my quick, dirty five minute. Let's, let's create something and throw it at the players and see what kind of nightmares they're going to have afterwards. Yeah. Nice. I, did, I must admit I'm similar. I like anything that's like abysmally disgusting. Yeah. yeah. And Call of Cthulhu is a great game. I mean, mostly role play and it's much more free and easy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. For just sitting around, it's, all, it's almost a no dice game. You just sit around. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Well, Brian, excellent to finally tick you off my bucket list of D and D stars. Uh, thanks for coming. Stars, on. <laughs> oh, man. I'm. I, yeah. I was very well. I, I appreciate it. It's that's it's humbling for me. Um, I, I'm just looking at this as you know. I, I'm just trying to have fun, yeah. and you know, I I have met a lot of really good people in this space. 
in in the D space in the youtube space mm. and you know i i love doing little things like this um it is it gives me an opportunity to meet even more people out there that are into the game and into the hobby like i am and i i just i don't know i think that that's i think that's one of the coolest elements of now talk about you know uh, uh vtts and and all that stuff digital um you know to an extent i guess that's kind of what youtube has become is you know this is our own little virtual world and i let, let's let's jump back in time let's say let's say it's now the year you know uh 1995 would you and i be sitting here would we even have the technology doesn't didn't even exist for us to be able to sit here like this and talk you know i'm mm. in the united states you're in the uk and it's yeah this is kick ass i mean this is really yeah. cool to be able to talk to somebody you know across the ocean like this and yeah. you know the i think the biggest complication is just trying to match up time zones yeah. so that and and schedules you know so that we can uh, you know have the time to sit down and talk but i just i think to me that's one of the most exciting things i've got a lot of international uh viewers on my channel and we get a lot of neat comments and I, I just, I love being able to have that connection with, uh, with other gamers. I just, I yeah. think that's one of the coolest aspects of what it is that I'm doing with YouTube. Yeah. I was, I, uh, I spoke to D and D shorts the other day within seconds, he'd sent my son a video birthday message. It was like, <laughs> oh man, this is a, such a cool place to be. Yeah. You know, anyway, thanks for coming on. Great. All right. Well, thanks for having me.